Hi, and welcome back to Leslie's Lab. In a previous episode, we looked at a homemade TEA nitrogen laser, and we also looked at a homemade dye laser. Dye lasers are awesome. Um, they're the, the, the best lasers ever, in my opinion. Uh, you can generate any color in the visible spectrum that you like, um, and dye lasers ultimately are tunable as well. In this episode, we're going to look at a modification I've done to the dye laser where we make it tunable and we can sort of continuously vary the color from one end of the spectrum to the other. So let's go. So this is the dye laser on the bench. Um, it's the same dye laser that I used in previous episodes where I built a TEA nitrogen laser. Uh, and this is the homemade dye laser that went with that. Um, there's one slight change and that's the rear mirror mount. Um, I've replaced the mirror itself with a diffraction grating so we can essentially tune the output. Um, the idea is that when the laser fires some of the light will hit the diffraction grating and we can essentially choose uh, the wavelength that re-enters the cell uh, so we can choose the wavelength that we want to amplify inside of the dye laser. Um, it's pretty simple, you know, pretty dead straightforward. Uh, the diffraction grating itself uh, came from Thor Labs. Um, I'm not actually sponsored by Thor Labs, I have nothing to do with them. It's just that they happen to provide, you know, relatively inexpensive optics uh, in Europe. Um, so, you know, if you're looking for things like diffraction gratings and odd lenses and stuff, um, I'd recommend them. As I said in the introduction there, we can actually uh, sort of broadly choose the wavelength we want out the dye laser in the first place uh, simply by changing the dye. So I have uh, a curvette here of rhodamine 6G, uh, whose center wavelength is in the orange. And we, we would in principle be able to tune this from red um, all the way to yellow, perhaps even green at a push. Uh, the dye we're actually going to look at today is rather special. It's the dye that's in the dye laser itself. Um, this is 7-hydroxy-4-methyl-coumarin. Um, and if we shine an ultraviolet light on it, it just looks blue. Uh, it doesn't look very exciting at all. Um, if we add um, a, a, a drop or two of ammonia uh, to the dye solution, uh, still nothing much changes. It looks like it fluoresces a little bit brighter, but nothing else exciting appears to happen. Uh, but the tuning range of this particular dye is, is the most impressive tuning range that there is. Um, we can tune this from the ultraviolet, so about 390 nanometers, um, all the way to 570 nanometers, which is for all, it's green. Yeah? So we, we can, from, a, from a visual perspective, we can tune from violet to green, which is really, really impressive. Um, it's actually uh, rather difficult to see. Um, when, when, you, when you tune um, rhodamine 6G from red through to sort of a, a dirty yellow uh, color, it's kind of difficult to spot the changes as you're going. Um, especially for me, I'm actually red-green colorblind, uh, so it sucks to be me. Um, this particular dye, however, it's really quite striking when you tune it. Uh, when, you, when you tune from the violet all the way through to green, um, the, the colors are, are really quite, uh, quite brilliant, uh, and that's the dye that we're going to try today. Um, so let's stick this in front of the nitrogen laser and have a look. I have the dye laser set up here in front of the nitrogen laser. On the end of the nitrogen laser itself, I've put a silica lens to expand the beam uh, somewhat, just so I can make sure that all of the light is effectively coupled into the cell. Uh, we'll just fire it up for just a brief second and you'll see the, the output on the, on the post-it note there. The output in this case is actually green. Uh, there's some spurious uh, blue or violet light that comes out of the dye laser as well, which is amplified spontaneous emission. Um, I'm going to rearrange things in a minute and uh, do some shenanigans with the camera. You'll notice that when the when the dye laser fires there, the output looks really quite white. And obviously, you know, these are multi-kilowatt pulses uh, and they tend to saturate the camera. So we'll do some rearrangement and take a look at the, the beam. Okay, so this scene looks very, very dark. In actual fact, uh, the, the room lights are on full and there's daylight flooding in through the window. Um, I've turned the iris on the camera way, way down. Um, as I've said before, you know, many tens of kilowatts of laser light are produced by the dye laser and they do have a tendency to saturate the camera when you're trying to take um, images like this. Um, so I'm going to fire up the dye laser just now. And when I first fire it up, we'll be tuned to the, to the very, very violet end um, of the spectrum. Um, and as the video progresses, I'll start to tune towards the green. So let's fire it up. So we should be able to see um, a violet spot on the target and I'll begin to tune. Now as I'm tuning the output will get quite bright and it will saturate the camera a wee bit. But now we're well into the blue and I'll just keep turning 
We're getting a lighter blue. Now we're getting, you know, somewhere around about um, 490 nanometers or so. We're getting a sort of a turquoise color now. And then a blue green. And as we keep turning, we'll start working our way into the green. Now we're very, very green. And I think that's about as far as we can go. So I've turned the room lights down in here um, and I've got a can of magic smoke. Um, this is magic can uh, so that we can try and see the beam. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna fire this thing up uh, and at the same time, I'm gonna attempt to tune it and blow some smoke in the beam so that we can see the color change happen. So we're at the violet end just now and we'll begin to tune towards the green. So now we're well into blue. Now we're going blue green and then finally green. I think that's about the tuning limit. I think if we go any further we'll lose the beam. There it goes. I'll, I'll tune back the way. There's green again. There's blue. And then finally violet. This is way cool. What you're looking at here is a 30 second long exposure photograph of the dye laser being tuned from green through to violet. To the right of the image is the homemade TEA nitrogen laser that I built. Um, if you haven't seen the videos for that, be sure to check those out after this. And next to this is a beam block to do with spurious reflections. So there's reflections um, appear from all, all sorts of places off the sides of the curvette and off the diffraction grating. And that's just to deal with those. In front of the dye laser is a flint glass dispersing prism um, from which a partial rainbow appears in the photograph. The dye laser is being retuned after every single shot. Um, since the angle of dispersion is dependent on the wavelength of light, a rainbow effect is produced over time. This makes for a really cool looking photograph. Thanks for watching this episode of Leslie's Lab. If you want to see more content like this, don't forget to hit like and subscribe down below, and I'll see you guys next time.